going for a swim or just walking up with my towel. I had no outside the tiger area. I was going for a swim in a reservoir. It was hot in summer. And suddenly out of nowhere, this tiger charges me. And we have a tripwire, which is a meter high, which is running with 6,000 volts. Then we have an uh, offset of the main fence of another electric wire running also 6,000, 7,000 volts. Then we have the fence and the mesh. And he just went straight through the electrics like that. Try. And he was well fed. He had eaten a blessed bug the day before. So it's not like he's starving or something. And he just went straight for me. And, and, and the mesh caught him. As he charged through, the mesh caught him and tumbled him back into the, into the boma. To open and to close the gate, I have to open Corbett's gate slightly, open the other gate, get my vehicle out, which I did, close the gate, and then the gate for Corbett, I was battling to, to close it. It's stiff. Wouldn't, it wouldn't align with the bolt. But I did all my checks. Three times I looked behind me like this. I always check behind me. And I teach anybody else that's working with me to do the same. To be very, very relig religious about this checking behind us. Um, the fourth time I checked behind me, I saw a big tiger on a rock. I presumed it was, it was Corbett because I haven't seen a female the whole afternoon. Close, 10 meters, maybe 12 meters. He was waiting for a chance. And he knew it was his last chance. As that bolt dropped, I stepped away to go back to the vehicle. And he must have charged just so fast. Now all my gates have, um, have rods like that, close together, so the tiger can't get the ball through all got rods like that. Uh, but this particular one uh, had wire like that. It wasn't, wasn't the best of my gates. And what he was able to do in a flash of a second is put his claw, his whole arm, through the wire. And then they can curl their wrist just like you can. So he curled the wrist around me and he grabbed me here around the waist. He pulled, hooked me back like that. And uh, I can remember the impact. It was unbelievable. Unbelievable impact. Um, and as he pulled me back, he broke a piece of my spine, but not the main spine. He broke um, uh, two ribs, nine and ten. Fortunately, the two ribs cracked clean like that. And then he broke um, well he right through the liver, punctured the lungs slightly. Um, and so as he pulled me down, uh, he, he had me anchored with the one paw. And he's raking me with the other. Um, I think the pause, the, the revolver and, and the pouch gave me protection. But his dew claw, which is like your thumb, and it's his longest claw, went into my groin here. And it just missed, it cut the art, the, um, it cut the, it missed the main vein, you know, the vein that comes through. The big artery vein. If he'd hit that vein, I, I wouldn't be talking to, to my legs. And then a guy from the camera crew, this is the first time he'd ever seen a wild tiger. His first shoot ever, ever been to Tiger Canyon. He, he was interviewing him as well, and obviously with Julie as well. Um, he grabs an iron pole from what I can gather. He's a big guy. His name's, they call him Pumi. Must be short for Pumlango or something. So you must get the right spellings of the names. Eh? Anyway, Pumi comes with his big wire, uh, iron 
thing. And he hits Corbett right in the face. Hits him in the face. Apparently the tiger rears back. The, I'm just telling you what Julie told me. Because now my eyes are down. I can't see nothing. So he hits Corbett in the face. <coughs> and Corbett rears back and releases me. Corbett comes for a second attack. He hits him again with an iron bar. Then he retreats about, they said, about five meters, not a lot. Then they pull me back through the wire. Okay? And they, then they say to me, run for it. And that's when, if he'd broken my spine, I would have been crippled. And then Corbett would have just come back and killed me. But uh, um, I was able to run with difficulty. I don't suppose it was running, but it was just moving. And got back into the car. 